Hello, this is Vorkosikin78, and in this video I'm going to give a beginner tutorial on how to use LDCAD to make digital LEGO models. Now, I wouldn't call myself a LDCAD guru or anything, but I, I have a decent level of experience that I'd like to share to help you guys um, get, get off and running with the tool. There's a lot of <coughs> details to learn. Uh, that are very helpful at efficiently building up uh, a model. So first off you're going to need to get the tools installed and in the uh, description I'm going to include a link to the LDRAW all-in-one installer which will include LDCAD and, and other useful tools. So. First off, you're going to want to create a new file. You, when you open the program, you're going to get this starting dialog, and you can click Start a New Model. You want to put the, the name of the model, your name, and any other details you want to fill in here, and hit Accept. Now, first thing you want to do is, is set up the workspace. So by default, on the on the left here, you'll have um, an area where you can pick colors of parts, and then below that, uh, where you can pick um, different kinds of pieces. So for the colors, there's these different categories of colors, and six different tabs that you can have to conveniently um, to flip between. So if you choose solid plastic for your basic colors, you're going to get this color wheel. And this has a lot of the common colors. Um, there's multiple wheels that you can flip through with the arrows. And then similarly, you could create another group for, say, transparent colors. And that's going to give you a selection of transparent colors, which there's not as many of. There's only two wheels of those. So that gets you started with the colors. And then this is going to show recently used colors here. And then below that, you're going to have your parts, and there's various ways that you can look for parts. Start with just this basic upper left one, which is um, sorted by function. So you go into that, and then you have different different functions, so bricks, plates, etc. Technic. Choose bricks. Uh, then there's different kinds of bricks. If you go with basic bricks, now we can start. Uh, building our model. So I'm going to build a simple robot model here as a demonstration. Now you can see a whole big list here of various basic bricks and what I'm going to start with is a couple 1x2s. You click and you can drag the part into the editing view. Now if you click anywhere not on a part and drag, you'll by default you'll rotate the view. The initial parts, we want to put them um, near the origin, 0, 0, 0. Right? So you can see the x, y, z coordinates there. And one thing we can do if we want to um, make the starting position consistent with the way the views are defined is we can open up this view menu Go to Editing Views, and then I'll take this and put it over to the right side, and there's a Pin button right here that if you click, it will it'll lock it so that this won't go away after you select something. It'll just be a permanent part of the interface until you choose to close it out. All right, so then I'll select um, View Angle, and this gives some convenient shortcuts so I can say, okay, I want to look at the front. So this is what it defines as the front, and you can see the orientation of the brick. Now if we rotate this a little bit, I'm gonna, I don't want it to be in this orientation from the front, so I'm going to spin it around with this wheel, and I'll talk a bit more about that as we go on. I'm going to place the first two parts, so two of these. You can do a control c on it, and control v copy-paste, or you can just drag another one. So this will be the first step, just two of these bricks. Now another thing we're going to need in the interface is um, the current steps. 
Okay, so to see the steps, you click over here in the upper left of that in view where it says Step 101. That'll expand that out. And then again, I'm going to pin this. So we'll have it handy here. So we're on Step 1. Now, you could, in theory, build the whole model on one step. Um, but that's not a good idea. I, really, you should try to make multiple steps as if you're creating uh, instructions and this even if you don't go back later and actually make an instructions file that allows you to easily um, go through the different phases of the model and edit things without having to edit the entire um, complete model at once so it's just a good practice to use uh, and of course if you are going to make instructions then it's really critical that you have the steps well defined at how you want them to be in the instructions so this is step one, just these two bricks. I'm going to hit Depend to make a step two. And then I'll put on top of this another brick. So I'm going to go to a two by three. You can see how things are sorted, you know, the one by X first, and then eventually you get to the two bys. Um, just using the mouse wheel to go through them here. So there's a two by three brick. I'll bring that out. Now, right now I have part snapping turned on. So the way you do that is in this lower left. If you hover over, you'll see um, some options. This PS is part snapping. So if you turn off part snapping, parts will just move and they can collide with each other um, unrealistically. But there's, of course, times when you want to move things that way. But mm, a lot of times, if you're just doing normal bricks, plates on top of studs, uh, it's nice to turn part snapping on, so you can go over here, change it from GS to PS, and now, see, it'll just snap the part to the studs, and that's generally the fastest way to build if you're not doing anything um, too unusual. Okay, so we have two steps here, step one, step two, and because I uh, used the view angle, we can, we can hit front, and okay, this is how I wanted it to look from the front. So the purpose of that was so that, you know, front is actually the front of the model. If you if you just started building without looking at this, you might accidentally build things so that right is front and, and then it's confusing. So it's, it's you know, just a good practice to try to match it to this. So you can easily switch between the different view angles, which will become more useful as the, as the model gets more complicated. All right. So there's the first two steps. Then next step, I'm going to see add some uh, bricks with a stud on the side. Now it's useful to look at the description on the, the bottom of the, the window here as you're hovering over. If it's not immediately clear from just glancing at the image what the part looks like, I mean what the details of the part are. So this is a one by one brick with a stud on one side versus on two sides or size, etc. So I'll put this one here. Now I'll explain a little bit this this rotation tool and how this how the selection modes work. So this is kind of a critical uh, detail. So there's these three different selection modes on this pin. What I have selected right now is the rotation. You can change it to selection, which will allow you to just move the parts, which you can also do by dragging the parts, but this will constrain it to just up, down, left, right if you want. Um, and then this third one is actually changing the center of rotation. So right now it's kind of high up on the brick if you wanted to move it down to the middle. Great, you can do that. But I go back to rotation, which is the one I most often use. So depending on how you're looking at it, it's going to change, you know, what axis is being rotated. So I want to rotate it from the top down. And I just grab the circle and spin it around. You can see the number of degrees there. And if you want to change that to have a finer or coarser increment, you can again go to this lower left menu. And this provides some options. You can select how many degrees of rotation, you know, how much of a movement, you know, what, how big the step are when you move the parts around. So for example, I could say I want it to be actually 30 degrees so I don't have to go through so many steps when I rotate. All right. 
So I actually wanted this part to be in step three. So I'm going to go ahead and append another step. And since I put this one in step two by mistake, well, that's going to happen sometimes, you need to know that you can use this move to step. So I'll click move to step, and I want to move this part to step two. Right, so you could select a part and the step you want it to move it to multiple times if you needed to, but we just have this one that we're moving to two. After I do that, I'm going to click the back arrow, and now if I go back to step one, step two, you see this appears in step two. Oh, wait a second, I want it to be in step three, not step two. So I'll do it again. Move to step three. Go back. Okay. Okay, so I want this to be in step three. Click the part, click move to step, select step three. Now if I go back and select two, it's not there anymore. All right, so now I'm in step three. I'm gonna add some more parts. I'm gonna copy and paste this part again. And what else do I need? I'm gonna actually put this this was not the final uh, location I wanted for it. I'm going to move it actually over here and rotate it like this. Okay, so I'm going to have these two studs on either side of the model. All right, now I also need a couple one by twos. So rotate it, place it with the part snapping. I'm just going to copy paste so it's in the right orientation to begin with. Okay, there's step three. Now, I'll talk a little bit about colors quick. I'm going to append to step four, so step four is ready to go. But if, um, if you wanted to use some different colors, you can go to the color wheel. For example, select, I want, I want to have a, a yellow brick. Now, it's going to change what new bricks color is going to be, but it's not going to change immediately what the existing brick you have selected is. To do that, you need to go click this. Um, larger color block here in the recently used ones and that'll change it to that color. So, you know, say I have this red one, oh, I want this to actually be black, select black, oh, it didn't change it, no, you actually have to click here to change it, otherwise it's just picking what the next color used will be. So, I'll change this to red, change this yellow one to red again, because that's what I'm going with the model, but good skills to know how to use changing the colors. All right, so step four. What do I want to do for that? I'm going to put uh, a plate on here. So let's use some other part categories. So I just been using bricks. Go over to the second tab. It'll be handy to have plates open. So again, using library sorted by function, select plates. I just want a normal plates. And I want a two by three plate. So Go through these. Now I'm in the two bys. There it is. Two by three plate. I'm gonna have to rotate it again. There you go. So now I'm looking through all the list of parts, find your parts every time it can take a little while. One thing that's very convenient is that you can create a group of recently used parts. So if you go to um, favorite parts here with the heart, this is parts that you'd have to specifically add as your favorites. But if you go to historic parts with the clock, this is just going to automatically accumulate um, the parts that you've used recently. So you can do the last 24 hours, seven days, etc. Um, so I like to just do all and you can see a bunch of parts I've used recently, right, for various models. So very convenient to be able to go in here and just say, you know, oh yeah, of course I use this part a lot, just basic one by two. It's handy in here in the list of recently used parts. All right, so I'm going to continue going, uh, building up the steps. I'm going to do step five, so I hit append again. I'm going to do another plate. It's the 
one by one plate. This one I want to be black, so I'll select black first. Go ahead and put my plate on there. I'm also going to use a red one. And then a couple one by twos. So there's the one by twos. To rotate it quick. Copy and paste it. Alright, there is step five. So the robot's coming along. I'm going to go on to step six. This one I'm going to just have some more bricks. Use these ones with one stud to create the eyes. And I'll go back over to tab one where I have normal bricks. I'm going to put uh, one by two. Well, I don't want it up there, but after I rotate it, I'll be able to fit it in here. And also a couple one by ones. Okay, great. So you can start to see the face coming together. And I'll just finish up the top. Now I'm going to need some tiles. So again, go select that tiles are underneath the plates category in general, but then tiles, there's tiles with stickers and prints. I want the ones without. One thing about tiles, always like to select the ones with grooves. You don't want the old without groove tiles unless you have some specific reason to use them. But generally, um, you know, they're not too common anymore and oof, boy they're a pain to remove. So get the one with the groove in there. Sometimes there's finer points of parts like that that you kind of have to get some familiarity with all the different parts. Um, so you're picking the right ones out of the list. Alright, so another thing I'm going to want is a couple of jumper plates, which not in tiles, they're with normal plates. Let's see, there's the one by two jumper plate with one stud. All right, there's the top of the robot. Now let's put something on all these exposed studs. Now, uh oh, I built this up as one step, and maybe I don't want to do that, so I'm going to again make a second step. And I'm going to send this to step 7. Click that one, send it to step 7. Alright, so now, step 6, step 7. If you're like me, I make that mistake fairly often and have to go move things around one step to the next. Alright. Let's put some eyes on this guy. So I'm going to actually use a plate for that. Just a normal one by one plate. Now. I want it to be trans neon green, kind of using like Mtron colors here. So if I go to transparent, since I've created a transparent tab, that's not that green. Let's see, where is it? It's over here. Nope, that's something else. Trans bright green. Maybe it's in the second tab. Glitter trans neon green. There we go. Of course, uh, representing some of these colors in a color wheel. Eh, does that look like neon green? Sure. But it's called trans neon green so you know for sure that's the one you wanted. And it you know, colors all the parts with that so it's kind of neat with the transparent ones how it looks. But so you bring your part over here. I want this to be eyes so I'm going to need to rotate it. So if I look at it from the side and actually I could use this right side view is convenient. And then front side. Right. I'm gonna, oops, I don't want to rotate it. I'm gonna move it over. So I'm gonna, see if you use this um, kind of translation function, it doesn't do the snapping. You have to move it in 3D space to see the snapping come into play. All right, there's two eyes. I think I'm gonna put a little control panel on the chest. So for that, I don't want a plain tile. I want a tile with printing. And I'm going to use black. And so this is where it would be. Actually, I'm not going to bore you guys with finding that tile because there's so many printed tiles. Here it is in my recent parts. And I'm going to need to rotate this one. And I want to 
snap on here. Now you'll see one of the, the uh, limitations of snapping is it wants this tile to sit perfectly with the stud and either the left or the right, but I don't want that. I want it to be centered. So to turn off snapping and just move it a little bit so now the robot control panels is centered on them. And I'll turn part snapping back on for other parts. All right, so step seven includes those top um, plates and tiles and as well as these front pieces. I'm gonna create a step eight as well and I'm gonna add some kind of antenna on this guy. So I want them to be transparent. All right, now let's get into some other topics. Important one is submodels. Oops, there we go. So I'm going to want to put some arms on this guy, and I'm going to want a submodel for that. Now looking at this, oh no, I made a mistake. There's no hole here. So you, because we have steps, it's very easy to go back and look at just this step. Now for such a simple model, yeah, you could just drag this part out and replace it with something. But as the model gets more complicated, it's really nice to be able to go back to that step where you added the part and only, um, only edit that step. So I actually want a shoulder joint here, so I'm going to go to the Technic area and Technic Bricks and get myself a Technic Brick with a hole in it. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, there we go. Now he's ready to have some arms put on. Except one more thing. Well, we're gonna wanna have a pin there. I'm gonna use a friction pin. Oops, not an axle, a pin. Since they're always black, might as well be realistic with that. I'm gonna scroll a little bit too far. Actually, not far enough. Okay, here we go. Technic pin. There's the pins with friction. So, use this top to rotate it. And then use the snapping. So, this is another way the snapping is nice for pins as well. And put it over here, too. Alright. So, you could actually leave them like that with these funny little <laughs> short arms, but no, I'm going to put some longer arms on there. So to do that, I'm going to go to Session, and I'm going to create a new submodel. So there's a selection here, Add New Submodel. Again, you can name it as you want, fill in other details. I'm just going to call this Arm. All right, and what do we need for the arm? I'm going to make it red. I'm going to use some uh, Technic bricks. So there's this one. Let's take a look at what the front is. Okay, the front has a hole. And then just a plain brick underneath there. This submodel, you could uh, you would want to add steps if it's complicated. This submodel is going to be super simple, so I'm just going to leave it without any steps, just all in one step. And there you go. There's his arm. Okay, so how do I get back to the other model? So again, you're going to want to click Session, and if you're regularly working with a bunch of submodels, you're going to want to uh, probably pin this one too. Here we only have the two, but just pin it for reference. All right, so I'm going to change current session to what? The main one, right? So you'll see your list of all the sessions here. I'm going to go back to main, and now I want to add the arm. Well, where do I get it? Well. You're gonna you can pick a tab that you're not using, go back, and find the contents of this model. So that's this one. If you click that, there's different ways you can view um, all the models being edited, all the contents of this model, um, all the parts being edited. So that's kind of a neat, neat one if you want to see your steps. So right, what is um,
Oh, sorry. No parts are being added. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to see uh, all the parts in the current step, you click this one. Right, so, oh, these are the parts in this step. What were the parts in this step, right? It's kind of nice to see, um, other than just comparing from one step to the other, what was used in this step. All right, so if you want to see the submodels, you click on this one, where it says MPD there. And look, okay, we have the main model and we have the arm. So you would see all your submodels here. And now I want to bring in this arm submodel. So I'll bring it over. All right, I'm going to need to rotate it. Now I'm going to want to rotate the arm angle too. Now this is a case where you're going to want to adjust the rotation point, potentially. So I'll adjust it up so it's in the center of this technical. And yeah, oh, how do I want the arm to look? Yeah, you know, that looks nice. And then I'll just snap it on there. Now I'm going to want another one. I'm just going to copy this one. And then let's look, at it. let's look at it from the right side. What angle should this arm be? Maybe I'll have it going back a little bit like it's walking. All right, then I'll snap that on there. All right, so this should probably be another step. So I'll just move the arm to step nine. Move this arm to step nine. Okay. okay. And then one more detail in step nine. I'll make this guy be like a wind-up ro robot. So I won't put a winder piece on here. Um, now I don't know what category would that be in, right? It can be complicated to find some parts that are a little less common. So one thing you can do is you can always um, look up the part on BrickLink or something if that's easier, and you can search for it. So here is the search function, minifig with a magnifier, and then you click in this where it says no filter. You're going to want to enter your text. Now you could look up the, the part number, right, and put that in, or you can also use description. So in this case, I'm going to put in winder because I want the the winder piece that looks like a little a key to a little wind-up toy. So there it is. Came up as well as some other parts that use the term winder. And I'm going to want it to be flat silver because this is a part that's not available in many colors. And it's an appropriate color anyway. So I'll create another color group, metallic, and I have to look for flat silver. Here it is. Rotate the part. And maybe let's put it at a little angle there. All right. And another thing you can do if you want to pan around the view is hold the shift key. So now I'm panning the view. And I rotate it around. There's a cute little robot. Kind of Amtron colors. All right, so I think that gives most of the basics that you're going to want to use. Step, pane, the colors, part selection view angle, and sessions. Now, of course, there's a lot of other powerful features in here, but this is, uh, you know, basic basics that you're going to need to get yourself started. Hope this helps you uh, get going in the, in the world of LEGO CAD and using LDCAD. I've used a few tools, and I find this one uh, pretty good for myself pretty effective. So let me know in the comments what you're going to do with it and any other things you'd like to see in, uh, in tutorials. Thanks for watching.